This is One on One. It is my honor to introduce a distinguished uh, academic who came to us from the University of Nebraska. He's here at NGIT now. He is Dr. Namas Chandra, and he's director of the Center for Injury, Biomechanics and Materials and Medicine at NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you very much, Steve. You know, we were talking right before we got on the air that uh, your center is focused on doing research in the area of traumatic brain injuries. All right? Let's put some things in perspective. Uh, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, report that there are 1.7 million traumatic brain injuries recorded annually. And you just told me before we got on the air, 3.7 million concussions every year mm -hmm. in the U.S. Right. What are you researching? We want to understand exactly how the brain injuries are caused, whether we can protect them, how to diagnose them if not protected, and come up with better medicines to treat them and look at the diagnostics value of the therapeutics as it goes along. Doctor, how complex? I know this is a simple question <laughs> to an incredibly complex issue. How complex is the brain? It is very complex. Brain is what we are, Steve. We are our brain. An injury to the brain just changes our personality and who we are. So we'll back up. An injury to the brain changes who we are? Correct. Make the case. Brain is basically our <clears throat> CPU computer that operates every other part of our body. If there's an injury, it may impair our hearing abilities, walking abilities, and thinking abilities. All of our abilities are embedded in the brain. An injury to that, either in the serious or moderate form, still affects us, just not us, the people around us, the society in general. So right before we got in the air, I asked you, what is the difference between a brain injury, you have a brain injury, and a traumatic brain injury. Is this a question of semantics? Yes and no, Steve. Trauma is any external injury that, uh, external mechanical load that causes injury, a football concussions, a fall, or uh, involved in automotive accidents, or for example, a soldier who is trying to protect us, involved in a blast, all of them are external traumas. The injury that is caused by trauma is traumatic brain injury. The injuries can also be caused by neurodegenerative diseases as you grow older or other conditions like epilepsy, Alzheimer, and others. So traumatic brain injury is an injury that is preventable. It's preventable. Absolutely. Help us understand that. How is it preventable? The trauma is an event that happens and injures our brain. For example, if you're going in a car and get, get involved in an accident, what, what are the ways in which you can at least mitigate the effect of those particular injury is what, what, what I mean by protection part. In, you are going in an automobile or, or motorcycles, whether you are wearing a helmet or not is something that is mitigatable or preventable. You are playing football, if it is whether you are wearing the right type of helmet, right type of rules and regulations, that at least is not preventable, at least mitigatable. So the question really is we can- okay. Mitigatable meaning reducing the severity of the injury? Uh, yes. So, but the research that you're doing at NGIT, is it about trying to understand how to treat traumatic brain injuries or is it preventing or both? We first basically, like any universities, we are basically trying to understand the actual mechanism of injury. Suppose I go in an automobile and get involved by sudden braking or external car coming and hitting us. What causes this? How this is caused, both at the level of external surface and that level of surface of the brain itself, for example. Why do we need to know that? Um, that then tells you the connection between what the injury is and the medical outcome. If somebody is not able to walk, talk, think properly, or hearing properly, is there a connection between what the injury was and the event that caused those injuries? Now then we can go back to the question of preventing them by properly addressing what really originally caused those injuries. 
Your, describe your team. Who's there? In our team, we have medical scientists, physical scientists, and engineers. We work very closely with uh, medical school. And that's one of the reasons I actually came from Nebraska to here and mm. Rutgers Medical School. We also work with Kessler Rehabilitation Foundations where they are involved in trying to treat patients and recuperate the patients at least to a reasonable level after the injuries. The Kessler Rehabilitation Foundation, we're partners with them as well, it's fascinating. So you, when you work with Kessler, you take the research findings and share it with Kessler for what purpose? To have a better treatment a relationship between what they treat and how the treatment helps in, in a faster, better, and a more efficient way to reset the brain back to the reasonable levels of the before the injury event. I'm curious about something, doctor. Um, when did you know and what triggered your fascination with the brain? Well, I have a personal story. My own brother was involved in an in a accident long back, 20, 30 years back. It did not just affect him, it affected him, his parents, which are my parents, and myself. It, it is very, very personal to people. When they get involved in TBI, and it is true with respect to individuals, soldiers, and others, it just affects them irreversibly, and there and then the families. And I think, if there is an opportunity, that I, the time is now because we have an ability to understand things that you could not because of our advances in engineering, advances in medicine, advances in imaging, and advances in other computational tools. So as complex as the brain is and difficult as it is to understand, you are saying there is more reason to be hopeful and optimistic because of the technology and the advances today more than ever before. Absolutely. And our hope is well placed. Well, we appreciate you and your colleagues at NJIT and all the work you're doing every day on behalf of those who are struggling with uh, TBI, traumatic brain injuries, and, and those who are family members and, and those who care for them every day. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Cone Resnick, the Fidelco Group, Fedway Associates, New Jersey Sharing Network, Kessler Foundation, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.